I still have some leftovers from the last two mailbags as well as some new arrivals in today's mailbag. And I learned something useful to prevent Lion batteries from burning. Greet you YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. Next one is extremely thin and also small. It has an I2C interface, if you look at the pins here. And it has uh, the number 8128. And I found it. It has three different sensors on one chip. A CCS811 and a HDC1080 and a BMP280. The BMP is quite clear, it's temperature and pressure sensor. But this one is also, one of them is a carbon dioxide and the other one is, I don't know, I have to check. I found this one, the CCS811. It is a ultra low power digital gas sensor for monitoring indoor air quality. And this is why I bought it, because I have also other CO2 sensors and so on. And I wanted once uh, to do a video about these indoor uh, air quality sensors. The ADC1080 is a digital humidity sensor with temperature sensor. So we can also measure humidity. And the BMP280 mainly is a digital pressure sensor as we saw before. So we can measure pressure, temperature and the air quality, whatever this means internally in my lab, for example. The price of this board is $13 and this is probably because we have three quite high quality sensors on one board. The next one is also opened already. It is a selection of smaller and bigger solar panels and I want to use these for my energy harvesting experiments, at least a few of them, the ones which are at 3 volts and so on. The ones which are at 6 volt can not be used for harvesting because usually the harvesters have up converters or boost converters. So we will see what we will do with these. Next one. These are 18650 holders but they are a little bit different. I have two sorts of them. They here, they look similar, but if we look at it from this side, we see that here we have quite a thin contact. This is to solder them as a through hole on a PCB, but this one has a very wide contact. And because I don't have too many of them left, I thought, I buy this time the ones with the bigger connector here because if I do some load tests and stuff like that, these are quite, quite thin. The other I have are even worse. They just have real thin cables. These are nothing for doing any load tests or so. They are okay if you want to power your IoT device because 100 milliampere or something like that is okay with such a cable, but uh, if you want to have more, then these are nothing. These are okay and these are probably good. But they have the same problem as most of the batteries. These are normal 18650s and these are protected and you see they are a little bit longer. They are okay, no problem, but the longer ones do not work with these holders. Ah, yeah, it works, but uh, it's a little bit bent here. So <laughs> with the old ones, it definitely was no chance to get them in. 
This one is also opened already. These are also battery holders, two of them, but they have also some sort of electronics, boost converter here probably, and they also claim 5 volt 3 ampere, 3 volt 1 ampere. Very similar to the ones we had here. Here we have two, and here we have one battery. And let's check if they are in parallel or in series. They are in parallel. So we have double the capacity of this one. They also have 5 volts, 3 times 5 volts. Here we have also 3 times 5 volts, and here we have 3 times 3.3 volt, and here we have the same. Just a quick check shows that something is better here. If we switch off the 5 volt here, and if we check, we still have the 5 volt here. And also the 3.3 volt. Now if we switch it off here, we have no 5 volt and also no 3 volt. So it's really switched off. So this one is definitely better than this one. If we switch it on, <laughs> we can check whether we have voltage. Yes, 5 volt and 3.3 volt. Very good. Now, if I take out one battery, oh, 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 that was not very good. Short circuit somewhere, but I cannot see where this is or where it came from. Very strange, very strange, dangerous. I have to look at it later on, but uh, if it still works, we can check now, it's on. We have 5 volt and we have 3.3 volt. So these are really in parallel and you can also use this one with only one battery. That is really strange that something glue here. Uh, the minus is here and the plus is here and it's very close and I probably was able to shorten the whole thing here on the battery itself. So it has nothing to do with, with this device. It is more the defective battery here. Maybe it's better to enter this one first and then this one. If it is hurt here, nobody cares. Here it's all minus, but here it's dangerous. Very dangerous. I didn't know that. I have to pay attention in the future. So we learned something even in a mailbag. Also take them out with a minus ahead. Because the minus is everything minus here up till here. And here the minus and the plus are very, very close. This one, if I remember right, was about $2. And this one is, oh, $7, which is way more expensive. $4 plus $3 maybe. You find a different uh, supplier, but I paid actually seven seven dollars and something. And you see also a small trick I often do here, and it might also prevent this from happening. I put a little bit of solder on this side because these are made for welding. They do not get a good contact in these power banks. This is why I add a little bit of solder here small trick, but like that you never have problems with connectivity. This one here is also not from China, it's from the Netherlands 
and it's from One Thinks. And it's a demo kit. They asked me if they can send me one and I said yes please because this is something different. It is also LoRaWAN. It has Bluetooth. That is not the special thing, but the special thing is here. It has a PSOC chip in it. And these PSOC chips are a little bit special, different. They have some analog stuff in their chips. So it's not only an MCU, it has also some analog stuff and it can save operational amplifier and stuff like that if you want to have some analog things, which is very often the case for sensors. Nice development board. The module itself is quite small and we have a lot of broken out pins. So they told me um, they will help me to get this up and running. So this will be part of a, probably a whole video because I will not only cover the LoRa van stuff, I am also interested in this PSOC stuff. I had such a PSOC development board since quite a long time here, but I never plunged into it. So maybe this is now the time to do it. The next one is also from Amazon. It is made in China, but it's sold from Amazon in Germany. I see now more and more that the Amazon stocks some, uh, some stuff, which is much faster, of course, if I get it from Germany. And the prices are a little bit higher than from China, but uh, sometimes the speed is also quite interesting for me. So let's have a look. It's something for the Raspberry Pi. And it has a transformer here. And here it's written RPI POE. So this seems to be some sort of POE hat, power of, over Ethernet. I recently upgraded my Wi-Fi here in my lab and in the house. And then I had to use POE. And um, this is why I got interested in it. Obviously, you have two possibilities of PoE and uh, I will try to do a video about that technology that everybody is up to speed on how this power over Ethernet works because sometimes this can be an interesting solution. For example, my access points have now only one cable, the Ethernet which also powers them. This also is already opened. And it looks like an ESP8266. So let's look what is special. It has some sensors here. And I think we know these sensors, these very small sensors. It might be temperature and humidity sensors. So let's check. And really, this is an ESP8266 and it has three sensors on it. A BMP280 for pressure, uh, this HDC1080 for temperature and humidity, and then a BH1750, and this must be this light pressure sensor. That is interesting, light pressure. This is something I do not know so far. So we have to check what this BH1750 is. So this is a ambient light sensor, so nothing with pressure probably. But it's 16-bit, which is quite accurate for light, I assume. But of course, uh, it is clear that light, for example, in the dark, is much, much, much lower light levels than in uh, bright sun. So probably these 16 bits are necessary to have uh, reasonable results in daylight and also during the night. It, it can detect 0.1 lux to 100,000 lux, but you have to do some optical window. Um, so we have to check this. Uh, I bought this because this could be an ideal sensor for home automation. It's not cheap. It's uh, also about $14, but uh, the sensors 
The most important sensors for a room to monitor a room is probably here. So it might be uh, for somebody who does not like to solder too much. It has also a small footprint here. We have also to check about how much uh, power they use in in deep sleep, of course. Next one here is a capacitance meters. So I'm not sure. We will see. It is a BST 900W. 900W looks like 900 watts. And if we look at the size of these traces here, it's probably something with high power and a little bit of electronics here. It is a Juntec inverter from 8 to 60 volt input to 10 to 120 volt output and it should have 900 watts which is a lot. So the output current is up to 15 amperes. This is probably why we saw these thick traces and the output voltage is up to 120 volt. I wanted to have a little bit higher voltage. My Bench power supply usually goes to 30 volt and sometimes I need a little bit higher voltage and I wanted to have uh, this possibility. This is why I bought this inverter here. So let's check. Now I connect it to 5 volt and nothing happens here. I only get 5 volt at the output. Ah, the input voltage is 8 to 60 now I connect it to 10 volt. The input voltage is 8 to 60 volt, so I go a little bit higher than 8 volt. And really, it starts to work. 20 something. The output voltage is only 10. And now when I switch it on, the output voltage is 20 volt. Now we can go up. Now it should be 120 volt. And really it is exactly 120 volt. Quite good from this point of view. And if we have a look here, we have constant voltage, constant current mode. Ah, here we can obviously set the amperage, the voltage. Now, how can I switch it off? But it takes, it takes quite a while till the voltage disappeared because I have no load for the moment. And the capacitors here are quite big. So it looks like it works. It has also a fan here and uh, quite a, a, a decent heatsink and the fuse is 20 ampere at the input. I do not want to do some power tests because actually I do not want to use it for high power. I just uh, want to have this uh, possibility to have a higher voltage in the lab. All in all, this module does what I expected. Maybe it will not deliver the 900 watts, but for a fewer ampere it should be good enough. With the constant voltage and the constant current mode, the $20 is well invested money. That was all for today. As usual, you find all the links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.